Good morning, everyone. I see you, Deborah Johnson. I see you, Tracy Newmy. I see you, Rosanna, coming in here. I see you, Kim Edmondson, coming in here. I see my brother coming in here. What's up, Jeffrey Allen James? I've been missing you. I see Deborah and Tracy. I see all of you coming in here. If you are tuning in on the video live, and that's anywhere on Facebook, YouTube, and LinkedIn, um, to all of our podcast uh, listeners. <laughs> I'm so grateful that you are here. Uh, last week, y'all came in with a bang without any announcements or anything. Y'all tuned in. Y'all have gone back to listen to previous podcasts. I just want to say thank you to all of you. Thank you, Deborah. And Deborah, for, for the audio listeners, Deborah is saying I look amazing. So thank you, Deborah, for that. All of our audio listeners, good morning to you as well. Anyone who's tuning in by the replay, just thank you for tuning in. I understand if you're three hours behind us, you're catching the replay. And I'm noticing that you all are coming in right about 10, 10 30, 11 Eastern time catching the replay. So you may not be 725 Eastern when you're listening or tuning in, but you're watching it at 725 uh, specific time. I see you, Robert Holman, Kenny Stanley, Shirley Nicholson, Leah, what's up? Leah, I'm going to be talking about something you posted yesterday. So hold on, I'm going to get to that as well. I was laughing when I saw your post. I said, oh, we're on the same page. So let's get this, let's, let's take care of this. So anyway, y'all, good morning to all of you. Good morning. Tracy, what you agreed to? Tracy knew me said, I agree. What do you agree? Oh, you're replying to Deborah. Okay, I see it. I'm learning how to look at all these different screens. So now I was able to see that you came in under Deborah. So y'all, thank you for that. Thank you so much. Y'all, today is Monday, October the 31st, 2022. Y'all, this is the last day of October. I see you, Jacqueline. I see you, Misha. Y'all, this is the last day. We are really into uh, the holiday season. I see you, Adrian, coming in here from YouTube. Uh, I see you, Latrice Jones. Good morning. So y'all, we are at the last day of October. Um, we are eight days away from the midterm election. Yes, we are. We are eight days away. But before we even get to the eight days, uh, the, the U.S. has sanctions on Iran. Yes, Kenny said it's turkey time. Slow down. We got 28, 29 days to that. Nope, not quite. We have 25 days to that day. Good morning, Pastor Alex. Um, so, yes, um, the U.S. has sanctioned, added new sanctions on Iran. For human rights abuse. There are six prison system officials, one governor, three revolutionary guard commanders, two cybersecurity groups, two police chiefs, and two individuals, and one group implicated in extrajudicial killings all in Iran. So the U.S. has um, sanctioned them. So that is going on. Now, the news I want to talk about, I don't want to talk about, but I have to talk about um, is the Twitter news. Um, after being forced, you know, he didn't want to give up that $44 billion, but after being forced to continue with his um, his deal to purchase Twitter, within 48 hours, Twitter was just crazy all over the place. Um, the N-word on Twitter um, went up 500%. The hate speech is coming out. So let me say this about that. This will be our third week on Twitter starting today. And we're still on there. So all Twitter users, good morning to you. Um, so we're still on there. We are going to watch this um, speech, um, this hate speech, this rhetoric, the chaos through the end of our broadcast on Thursday. If it has... Um, uh, if someone has not taken control of it, we will come off of Twitter. But Twitter users, you can go to any podcast platform. But if you like the live and you like the video, I would suggest you come follow us over here on Facebook or subscribe to my YouTube, which is youtube.com backslash Gail Dudley. Again, my YouTube is youtube.com backslash Gail Dudley. Yes, Kim Edmondson. Kim Edmondson says, what the what? So let me break down. Some of what's happening on Twitter. Um, there, there are corporate advertisers who have already began to pull their ads. And this is this all happened in 48 hours. Um, it, it's really interesting. And then they're calling on more advertisers 
um, to pull their ads and their funding. Now, according to an article in Business Insider, the use of the N-word has gone up 500% since Elon Musk began his purge of the organization's leadership. Additionally, there have been uh, reports of a rise in anti-Semitic, homophobic, and xenophobic language. I was on there. I was putting in different hashtags, trying to see what was happening. It is wild over in Twitter land. It is wild. Marion, I see you. Good morning. The article goes on to say, um, uh, you will hear those people that claim that free speech rights should be honored. That is an argument. Um, that is flawed at inception. Americans are entitled to the freedom of speech as it relates to the government. This constitutional principle protects our rights to criticize the government. It does not mean that business businesses have um, have the right to to express hate. Businesses can refuse to allow hate speech. Um, and then they asked the question: Would you continue to shop? at a business that allowed hate speech. And I think all of us, was, most of us, or all of us here on these emotions, I believe would say no. Now y'all, most much like major social media platforms, Twitter makes its money through advertising dollars. An organization that gives space and comfort to hateful and despicable language should not be given advertising dollars. Um, and they were talking about, there's a difference between free speech and hate speech. Now, as reportedly account for about 90% of Twitter's revenue, According to an article in Media Matters that pulled data from Pathmatics, the top 20 companies that spent the most paid approximately $358 million combined since January the 1st of 2022. That's a lot of money. According to Media Matters, um, here's a list of the companies currently spending on ads on Twitter. And I want y'all to pay attention to this. This is where our advocacy can step in. HBO, Amazon, IBM, PepsiCo, uh, Incorporated, Best Buy Company Incorporated, Apple Incorporated, uh, the Coca-Cola Company, Capital One Financial Corporation, Procter & Gamble, uh, Unilever, Merck & Company, Disney, CenturyLink, Comcast Corporation, Meta Platforms Incorporated, Google, Verizon, Anheuser-Busch, CBS, and Mondel, Mond Mondel's in, uh, International. So those are the, the those are the companies that Media Matter has pulled out um, who are currently spending money and ads on Twitter. Now I'm I'm slow walking this because I want us to understand what's happening here. <clears throat> Social media, and I made a post myself on my personal wall on this past Saturday, and my post went something like, um, at this very moment, all social media platforms, and then uh, Devante Goins told me that there's one that is not, and I can't remember the name of the, um, the social media platform, but I ran by um, what appears to be um, extreme conservative white men. Let's just talk about it. And my question that I asked on my wall on Facebook is, is this. Um, if a Black company was to come in and to start a social media platform, and again, Devontae Goins said there is one. I don't know if he's on here or not. If he is, if he can put that up, that'll be great. Would you be willing to do it? Would you be willing to go to that platform? Why or why not? Um, cause I, and the reason I raised the question, we are quick to jump on platforms, but as soon as we know it's one of us, we're like, I don't know if I'm going to do that. And that even comes down to our products and y'all, we have to be honest and really do some soul searching as to why do we respond that way? Why do we respond that way? I see you, George Sanders. Good morning to you. So, um, social media, back to their article, social media, it says in the quote, social media has become uh, the new clan where people can don a digital hood, fake profile, and embolden hatred. And that we're seeing that more and more. Um, and and here's, the, here's the point, y'all. We must reject racism, fascism, hatred, and bigotry loud, loudly. Uh, we have a responsibility to, to reject it by demanding um, that these advertisers take a stand, but we too must take a stand. And it seems as if we're so addicted to our social media that we're not willing to take that stand. 
So my team and I, we discussed it. We're going to give it this week. If Twitter does not pull it in, we're going to come off of Twitter. So what? We would just have to do that um, because we don't want to be a part of all that's going on with Twitter. So in continuing the conversation with Twitter, um, again, after being forced to complete the transaction to purchase Twitter, um, Elon has been in the news for more than 48 hours now. He is terminating people. Uh, there are talks about a layoff and talks about bringing suspended people back on the platform. Um, it looks, I, I cannot verify this. <clears throat> I saw some posts that were under the Yi West name. Um, and I don't know if those are his exact post and I'm trying to look at them. So may he may be back. He's talking about bringing back the former guy by the end of this week, if not sooner, um, or at least open it up for him to come back if he chooses to. And people are already starting to decrease and come off of Twitter. I know I lost about a hundred, about a, I'm sorry, a thousand and thirteen or so followers. <clears throat> and when I say I lost them, that I'm, I'm assuming they were off because I went to go look for some people and their um, their um, handle has been um, disconnected. So I see you, Dr. Antoine. I see you, Diane Ladybug. Um, layoffs at social media giant Twitter reportedly began this weekend with some of the top people who were actually those monitoring, monitoring, monitoring the language. And up to 30% of them, uh, more employees are expected to be let go this week. Um, actually, today, he's trying to beat the November 1st where he has to pay them out. So it should happen today. So again, the N-word was at front and center on Twitter. Hate speech is taking over and the misinformation is on full display on Twitter. I see you, Stephanie. Now, um, he is also the owner, the CEO of Twitter is also spreading disinformation and he did it immediately. Um, after two days, Elon Musk uh, brought, bought, purchased Twitter um, he's already he's already he's already using his platform to spread misinformation to his 112 million followers about the biggest U.S. news over the weekend, and that is about Paul Pelosi. He made a post from a fake news source, which is satire, and he tried to stand his ground and back it up until people came after him. Um, he finally removed the post, but by now it's out there. People are sharing what he's put out there. Um, it was driving the news on Sunday. Um, he cited a widely discredited website that implied that the, the brutal attack on House Speaker uh, Nancy Pelosi's husband's paw was carried out by somebody they knew. It is clear that they don't know who this is and, that, and from what we saw in the news this morning, there's already a list of people that have been uncovered by the um, attacker. A lot is going on. Um, so I just wanted to put that out there. And I really want us to wrestle with if there are um, black and brown or minority social media companies, would we as a people be willing to flock to those sites just like we engage in Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, uh, YouTube, all the other sites. I really want to know your perspective. So if you are watching live and you have access to the chat, please put in the chat. If you're watching, um, listening by audio or watching the replay, we would love to still hear from you. So send us an email at newsinmotionwithgail at gmail.com. We really want to know where you stand with this. All right, y'all. Update on Nancy Pelosi's husband's Paul. Uh, husband Paul. AP News reports the husband of House Speaker Nancy Pelosi was attacked and severely beaten with a hammer by an assailant who broke into the couple's San Francisco home early on Friday. Um, it has been said that the, he was searching for the Democrat leader and shouting, "Where is Nancy? Where is Nancy?" Um, and that's coming directly now from Paul Pelosi before and after his surgery. The assault on the 82-year-old Paul Pelosi injected new uneasiness into the nation's already toxic political climate just 11 days before the midterm election. So uh, Speaker Pelosi was not in the home at the time. She was actually in Washington, D.C. She was on her way to team up with uh, Vice President Kamala Harris 
for some um, some speeches around helping getting people out to vote. But she did get home. Um, and the San Francisco police chief, William Scott, through trying his best to hold back tears, said this is not a random act. This was intentional and it's wrong. And that as, a, as, a, um, as an American, we need to get this under control. And we really do. We need to get this under control. Um, a lot of people came out. We have Mark Meadows, not Mark Meadows, excuse me, Kevin McCarthy, excuse me. Uh, he came out and said it was wrong. He actually said he reached out to Speaker Pelosi. Um, he had the right tone, but then there were other people who was taking it up a notch. And it was continuing that rhetoric. You had Marjorie Taylor Greene continuing the rhetoric. You had others who were out there continue, continuing the rhetoric. So, y'all, we have eight days as of today, and we need to vote. Now, tomorrow is it's on the ballot, but I have to talk about this today as well. If you have voted early in person, mail-in ballot, absentee, um, I want you to please say so in the chat. Um, our goal is to get 100% of News in Motion um, viewers and listeners to commit to voting in this midterm election. So we really want to know if you are voting or have voted. Again, um, if you are tuning in via podcast or audio, when you send us that email about the social media account, let us know if you've already voted or if you do plan to vote. You can send that to newsinmotionwithgail at gmail.com. Y'all let us know. We are hoping to have 100% of the News in Motion viewers and listeners voting in this midterm election. Um, now, things that are, are, that are on the ballot, I want y'all to hear this. I, um, I, I do my best not to tune into news on Fridays and Saturdays at the level that I do every day preparing for the show. Um, I'm, I'm tuning in anywhere and reading press releases anywhere from, I don't know, 10 to sometimes 14, 15 hours. And that's after the show, I'm continuously going, making sure that whatever I'm reporting, I'm reporting facts, I'm putting it out there and I'm, I'm correcting anything that's out there. But over the weekend, I pull back. I give myself about two to three hours so that I can enjoy the day and, and breathe and what whatnot. But I was caught on this. And this is happening so much. And y'all need to hear me. Please hear me. These things are on the ballot. The GOP have already made the statement that if they take back the House, and actually, actually they're saying when they take back the House, that they will in, immediately impeach Joe, President Joe Biden. They don't know why, but they're just going to impeach him. Uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene is on the record. She has already written up her impeachment um, proposal that she is going to submit the day that everyone is sworn into office. It's out there. It's on YouTube. Go listen to it for yourself. The second person they're going to impeach immediately is Vice President Kamala Harris. They don't know why, but they're just going to impeach her. And they will have the numbers. They will have the votes to do it if they take the House. I want y'all to hear this. I want y'all to hear this. They don't know why. They're just going to do it. The next person they're going to impeach immediately is um, A.G. Merrick Garland. Yeah, because as things are intensifying, as, as it looks like there's going to be an indictment that possibly may be coming out, they're like, they need him gone. So they're wanting him gone. They're, on all of these impeachment um, um, proposals have already been written. Just go into YouTube. You will hear them, them yourself. This isn't somebody else reading it. They're saying it on the floor what they're going to do. And then the fourth person is the secretary of state. So... Even with that, I don't care where you stand, what, what side of the aisle you stand on. Why is that your number one thing? Why, why would you want to do that? What, what is your reasoning behind that? And you're running on inflation. So why aren't you talking about inflation? And even with inflation, what's on the ballot, we need to be asking the question, okay, what are you going to do differently? What does that look like? What is your plan? How are you going to turn this around? How are you going to bring the interest rates back down? How are you going to put money back in the pockets of your constituents? How are you going to bring down those grocery bills? How are you going, what, how are you going to do these things? But see, they're not telling us how because they don't have a plan for this. They don't have a plan. And yes, I'm being very transparent this morning. So you kind of know which way I went leaning for the midterm elections. They don't have a plan. 
So, so how can they even make these statements and come out and say the things that they're saying? And again, they want to impeach what, what we would call the top four people immediately. So y'all, these things are on the ballot. Um, they're on the ballot and we really need to think through these things. Kim Edmondson says, I'll be voting on election day. Kenny Stanley said uh, their household had voted. Dr. Antoinette said both the bishop and I voted early. Shirley has voted. Patricia Lau says she'll be voting today early. Jeffrey Allen James uh, says Margie needs to focus on her divorce. Well, there's that. Donita said, I'll, I'll be voting early this week. Leah, um, she's saying that she's voting on election day. Marion says our democracy is on the ballot. You're absolutely right. Diane Ladybug said they don't care. It, this it, We are beyond a popularity contest, y'all. We are beyond popularity. We have to get to the root of what is it that you're doing and how are you doing these things? Good morning, Chardinia. Kenny said, whatever they can do to hold into, to hold on to power or gain power, they will do. I'm so sick of these fake government officials playing with the lives of American people. Deborah says she's voting on election day. Thank y'all for, for um, weighing in on that. We want to hear from more of you. So if y'all could all do me a favor, look for that thumb button, that thumb up or that heart button, click that several times so we can get our algorithm going as well. Next thing I want to talk about before I bring Kenny Stanley in here, um, y'all, we need to stay well. We need to stay well. Y'all keep, yeah, keep hitting that thumb. Keep hitting that heart. Please keep hitting it. Hold it down for a few times to get them clicking in. We would greatly appreciate y'all doing that. All right, y'all. ABC News, the World Health Organization, the CDC, and others are all reporting on this. Flu season. It's like, it's like I've been down for three years because we were dealing with COVID, but they flu is coming out with a vengeance. Y'all, hospitalizations are the highest in over a decade for this point in the flu season, according to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention. Uh, there have been an estimated 880,000 cases of lab-confirmed in influenza illnesses, 6,900 hospitalization, and 360 flu-related deaths nationally so far this season. And we're not even into the peak of it yet. Um, this is according to data released on Friday. This past week, there were 2,332 newly admitted patients in hospitals, over a third of the total of 6,900 flu hospitalization uh, this season. H3N2, y'all probably like, what is that? Y'all pay attention. It's something like the swine flu, bird flu, something like that, pig flu, whatever. H3N2 is the prom, uh, uh, predominant viral strain currently spreading. Previous seasons with mostly H3N2 viruses have been of higher uh, severity, particularly for older adults and young children, the CDC says. It is still too early to tell if this trend will continue. Now, y'all, the U.S. has not seen this high of a flu breakout since 2009, 2009, H1N1 swine flu pandemic. If y'all remember, I mentioned this sometime last week about they're calling it the triple endemic. Um, they're also talking about the RSVs, the flu, and COVID. And don't forget the COVID B1, no, BQ1Q. I believe that's the new one. Um, it's a it's a it's a um, offshoot of um, Omicron. What did Teresa? What did Latrice say? The trap. Yep, that's yep, that's it. That's it. Yep, we talked about that last week. That's it. So on top of that, we have the H three N two. Okay, which is a part of the flu, but it's a it's a different strain of the flu. Now, y'all, um, the National Public Health Agency uses a metric to estimate the season severity based on laboratory confirmed cases, doctors visit hospitalizations and deaths. They said people are not even able to get out of their home to come to be tested. And they believe that number is possibly triple, if not more. Um, so y'all, I'll say it again, influenza is hitting the U.S. both early and extra hard this year, according to CDC data. Again, already 880,000 cases so far, resulting in nearly right about 7,000 hospitalizations or more. And experts estimate this year's season will be the worst since 2009 uh, when the swine flu hit. So they're saying masks do help. 
There's no mandate or anything out there, but I'm going to say right here from News and Motion, my name is Gail Dudley, and I approve this message. Mask up, people. Seriously. At this point, it's a part of our wardrobe today. It's just a part. Just make it cute. Have fun. Just mask up. Just think about it. How many of you were sick when you were wearing masks? Literally. How many of you were sick when you were staying six feet apart? Somebody rolled up on me yesterday. I said, I'm going to need you to get back. And they said, oh, girl, that's over. I said, I'm going to need you to get back. And they got back. I don't know if it was my demeanor, the way I said it, the way I pointed or what. But I was like, I'm going to need you to get back. Get back. Why you want to be all up under me anyway? Just get back. Leah said, people, this stuff is real. Those of us in healthcare are getting daily updates uh, that are shocking. Max, mask up and Wash those hands. Isaiah, if you can pull that one up there, that'd be great so people can read that. Thank you. Um, uh, yeah, Jacqueline, mask up, people. Deborah says, I have never stopped wearing my mask. I haven't either. I, I don't wear them all the time, but I'll put it on in a minute. If I'm going into the grocery store, that mask is on. Target, that mask is on. There are places I'll go, I'm like, I'm kind of laid back. Mm -mm, I'm putting those back on. So y'all, um, I have more news, but I'm going to bring in Kenny real quick. Y'all, Kenny is doing exceptionally well with his show on Saturdays. We happened to pull the numbers. Uh, this past Saturday views was the most viewed uh, since he's been on uh, the first weekend in October. So we want to say congratulations to Kenny. Kenny, come on in here. Talk about what's up with game over. Hey. I was talking before um, we came on live and I said, I don't know why they didn't play the game, the Falcons and the Panthers. I know somebody who was in the stadium in Atlanta this <laughs> on yesterday and she said it was off the chain. She was like, now y'all know who it is. She's like, mom. She said the 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 um the the uh atmosphere was on full, and my baby girl was in the clubhouse suite, right? The 40th yard line. So there you have it. So Kenny, why don't we see all these games? Because that one would have been a good one to have seen on yesterday. It's the it's the NFL. They pick what games they want to put on TV, and some of the games they pick are horrible. I I have seen them, I have seen them also. Games they pick to put on TV. If it's not good, they will switch to the game that is okay. that is jumping. But I don't know why didn't they didn't switch over yesterday. Wow. Well, go ahead and give us a quick rundown, and I'll be back with some more news. Thanks, Kenny. All right. Good morning, News and Motion family. Welcome to Game Over with me, Kenny Stanley. What a weekend of sports we uh, we had this weekend. Uh, the Buckeyes they handled their business. The Cowboys did their thing. And the Lakers got their first win. Everyone was worried about uh, the Buckeyes during Saturday's game, but the season is getting down to the nitty gritty, and they're getting ready to. The season is going to get real, real quick. And as we seen Saturday, Penn State came out and they was ready to give the Buckeyes everything they had. Uh, Penn State was up twenty-one to sixteen, and the Buckeyes said, "Is enough? Is enough." And they reeled off 28 unanswered points and pulled out the victory, 44 to 31. Uh, that team up north, they beat the little brother, Michigan State, 29 to 7. But that wasn't the talk of the game. Uh, what happened after the game was a pure disgrace. Uh, four players from Michigan State, Tate Brown, uh, Curry Crump, Angelo Gross, Angelo Gross, and Zion Young have been suspended for their actions and jumping on two Michigan players after the game. Uh, no game is that serious, and it should never come down to you throwing blows. Uh, if you'd have showed that much fight during the game, maybe you would have won the game. But no, you have to show you behind after the game in the tunnel, and it didn't make no sense. Y'all jumped on a man, a young man, after y'all got beat. Don't make no sense to me. In the NFL, Broncos, they beat the Jaguars 21 to 17. Dolphins over the Lions 20, 31 to 27. The Vikings, they beat the Cardinals 30, 34 to 26. The Eagles flew over the Steelers. I don't know what's going on with the Steelers this year, but the Eagles flew over the Steelers 35 to 13. The 49ers beat the Brakes off the Rams 31 to 14. Bills uh, beat the Packers last night 27 to 17. I know y'all thought I forgot, but that would never happen. How about them Cowboys? Cowboys beat uh, the Bears 49-29. to 29. In the NBA, the Lakers show some signs of life. 
as they got their first win last night over the Denver Nuggets, 121-110. They were led in scoring by LeBron James, who had 26 points. Anthony Davis followed up with 23 points. And Russell Westbrook, who has, who has accepted his role coming off the bench, uh, added 18 points. Uh, and it, it was a great game. They looked like they had some life. So maybe the Lakers might be able to do something this year with this new role they're playing. Um, that's sports. Back to Gail for more news. See everybody on you Thursday. Know what? I think you should submit a proposal to the Dallas Cowboys to do their recap. Seriously. Because you're going to always go to them Cowboys. No I got to go what. to the Cowboys. Win, lose, or draw, I'm going to the Cowboys. There you go. Win, lose, or draw. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Thank you so much, Kenny. I appreciate it. You forgot to say that our high school won the championship, but that's okay. Oh, that, that, you know what? And Fred Jones <laughs> said something to me this morning. Fred, <laughs> hey, East High School won their first playoff game. Uh, and I love it. I'm gonna call all the Tigers to come out. We on a uh, collision course, as Fred Jones say, with them Steubenville Big Red down there. But we'll see. I don't think Steubenville won any, but we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Thanks so much, Kenny. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> all right, real quick, we got a couple other things we want to talk about. Number one, I don't know if you've listened to it, but "Lift Me Up" by Rihanna is straight fire straight fire y'all her this is her first song in six years for black panther wakanda forever original soundtrack and all i'm gonna say is wow that song alone tells me this movie is gonna be epic there's that um i did a no-no this weekend i normally check out reviews of movies before i get into them and i was just flipping through netflix on saturday after i was hanging out with my uh sisters y'all if you have siblings Every now and then, hang out with them. Take the day, hang out with them. My siblings, my sisters. And these were my sisters, not my brother. I know he's on talking about, but well, I didn't get to go. It was a girl's day with our cousin, Mary Lee. But um, we we hung out on Saturday. And um, we had, they just crazy. They just straight crazy. We had fun. So afterwards, I need to debrief. I need to come back because I laughed so hard. Had such a great time. So I ended up watching From Scratch. Ooh, I wasn't ready. I was not ready. It's based off of a true story. So y'all check out from scratch, but you you can't you can't do it in the middle of the day. You can't do that when you get home from work. Uh-uh. No, that'll mess you up. You really have to decide a day and watch it. And then you can't do that piecemeal stuff because this thing gets intense. I was crying so hard I could not catch my breath. And that was probably by episode four or five. Um, just the love. I won't, I won't spill the beans, but it is, it's absolutely a great movie. I, I had so many emotions when it was over that I had to start exercising. I got my weights. I got on my cycle. I was uh, on the, uh, the, I don't have a Peloton. I have a, I have a, uh, another brand, but I, I just had to work those emotions out. It was that kind of beautiful, but heavy, but refreshing, but loving. It was just all of that wrapped up into one thing. Absolutely amazing. Leah says she was up until midnight last night watching. Listen, listen, Jacqueline said everyone keeps talking about from scratch. Listen, Jacqueline, amazing. And men, you may look at that and say, oh, that's a, that's a chick flick. No, there's something in there for everybody. Something in there for everybody. But be prepared, have the tissues. I know I cleaned out a box of tissues watching from scratch. So there's that. We we did not get to this on um, on last Thursday because of our news um, cycle. So real quick, before we get to the inspirational message today, um, this is the last day of um, October. And if Isaiah, if you have um, a quietness and you want to come in and go through this with me, that'd be great. If not, it's cool. Um, it's up to you. But we want to um, talk real quick um, about, um, I got to find it, from Pure Wow. Um, see, we started, and Isaiah, just come in if you want to come in. We started um, uh, these lists when we first started with News in Motion. And we always do the list right around. We do them every now and then on Memorial Day or Labor Day. 
4th of July. And then we do them during the end of October. And then we do Thanksgiving and Christmas. And people literally told us, where was the list? I was waiting for the list so I could go to the store. And I realized that many people have already gone out and purchased their candy or it was over this weekend. There's some who's doing it tonight. But we just want to give a few um, of the 2022 best candy list from Pure Wow. We heard y'all. We know y'all like to hear the list. It's amazing how many people like this. It gives us a break a little bit from the news. But to some degree, it's news too. So I'm going to read a few. Then Isaiah's going to jump in and read a few. And then I'm going to go to the inspirational message. Isaiah, we're going to start with, um, let's start with 28. 28. Um, and we had 45, but you can go to purewild.com and put in 2022 best candy and it'll come up. But um, 30, I'm sorry, I'm sorry with 30. 30 is Snickers. 30 from out of 45 is Snickers. 29 is the Caramel Apple Pops. 29, um, you'll find the Jolly Ranchers. 27, Hershey Chocolates. 26, Smarties. 25, Mounds. All right, Isaiah, you can take the next 10 or so. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm looking at this list. I'm starting to disagree with some of these things. Number 25, we have a mound bar. Uh, number 24, we have Rolos. Number 23, we have Tootsie Fruit Shoes, which is an underrated candy, low-key underrated. <laughs> number 22, we have the original Tootsie Roll. Number 21, we have Sperry's. And number 20, we have Sugar Babies. And then, y'all, we get to 19, but we have Starburst on here twice. Uh, the number 19 Starburst, they're only talking about the reds, the yellows, and the orange. Number 18 is the Almond Joy. Number mm -hmm. 17, what is that called? Trolley? What it's called tro uh, Trolleys. Trolleys, Sour Bite Crawlers. Then we have 16, we have Skittles. So go ahead with 15, Isaiah. At number 15, coming in on the candy list, we have Airheads. Number 14, we have the Nerds candy. Uh, number 13, it doesn't say which uh, kind of candy this is, but number 13, we have M&Ms. No, Probably with peanuts. About... They better be with peanuts if they got M&Ms on here. And no, we're not <laughs> talking about Marshall Matters or the rapper from Detroit. We're talking about the actual candy here. Uh, <laughs> number 12, we have the Milk Dud. Number 11, we have Twizzlers, a.k.a. Red Tire Material. And no... <laughs> And number 10, we have the Kit Kat bar, which is un <laughs> undeniably the best chocolate bar out right now. Before we go any further, Mike Nicholson is saying, Gelly Dudley be having the most un-us candy list ever. <laughs> and then Misha says, no candy corn and no circus peanuts. Well, y'all hold on. We're not there yet. Let's see. Jacqueline says, I love circus peanuts. <laughs> We have uh, number mm -hmm. nine, the Reese's Fast Break. That's been on here for three years, y'all, and it's still on here. Number eight, we have the Hershey's Cookies and Cream, and this is my fave. Number seven, we have Starburst Pinks, the pinks. So notice that the uh, Starburst is either 19 for the others, and the pink is number seven. And yes, for all of you haters out there, number six is candy corn. Number six, and it's the most delicious candy there is. No, it's and not. And then we have number five, Butterfinger. So go ahead, take it away, Isaiah. Coming in at number four, this is an honorable mention for top three, but coming in at number four, we have the Sour Patch Kids. Now, me personally, if they had said Sour Patch Watermelon, that would have made a lot of sense. But regular Sour Patch Kids, I, I can let that slide. Number three, we have Reese's Take Five. Number two, we have the Twix Bar. And coming in at number one, the crown champion of the best candy for 2022, the Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, which unfortunately I cannot eat because I have a severe peanut allergy. So oh, wow. give me the Twix Bar. Give me everything besides the <laughs> candy corn, the red Twizzler tire materials, whatever <laughs> Jeffrey Allen James said candy corn is the cousin of Twizzlers. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It's fitting because candy corn looks like a construction cone and Twizzlers are made out of tire material. So it's, it's fitting. It's, it's, it's actually fitting. I see why y'all enjoy the list. And we also make the list fun as well. And it is news. It is news. George Sanders is uh 
peanut chew. All right, Kim says Reese cups should always be number one. Um, so yeah, so and Reese's, if y'all remember, because I was looking at the last two years, Reese's has been number one for at least three years on the charts that we have. Um, and then Mike says candy corn is tri-colored wax. <laughs> Yes, Pat, me too. We're, we're, we're biological sisters. Twizzlers is our travel companion. I have those on the plane. I have those in the car. You got to always have some Twizzlers. Yeah, yeah, basically, you're just, you're just that's, that's all you're doing. You're just, you're just ripping away at, at, at like red tires. Oh, whatever, whatever. So y'all, that is our list. Uh, um, we had so much news on Thursday. We had the list. We just didn't get a chance to get to it. But after so many of you wrote in and I'm, or, or DM does, I mean, I was like, whoa, they really want the list. That's the list. Our next list that will be coming up would be um, our Thanksgiving list. So if you have a list you want us to read from, send it in, send it in, Mike Nicholson, send it in to us um, sooner than later because we do our run of shows and then we fill them in with the um, the headline news. So if you have a list you want us to read from for Thanksgiving and for Christmas, let us know. We want to give all of you our Thanksgiving schedule now. Um, of course, no, uh, well, November schedule. Uh, we'll be here starting tomorrow. We will go all the way to the Friday before Thanksgiving week. We will miss that Thanksgiving week, but then we will return uh, the Monday after Thanksgiving. And I'm sure that the scores from Kenny Stanley is going to be up and popping um, and then so much other information. But we're going to take that week off. We were going to go to Wednesday before Thanksgiving, and we decided we didn't want to do that. So we're going to take that entire week off so that we can all rest, especially coming down from these midterm elections and all the conversation that will be surrounded by that through, I believe that's the uh, ninth, the eighteenth. So we'll we'll that's a Friday the eighteenth. So we'll be here till the seventeenth of November. We'll take the week off of Thanksgiving. We will return that Monday afterwards. So y'all give us grace. It's okay that we do that. So thank you, Isaiah. Y'all, the inspirational message, the inspirational me the inspirational message for today is stay the course. Stay the course. Y'all, we're going into November the 1st. Um, we are deep, heavy into our third quarter now. So I just want to say to you, stay the course, whatever course that is. This is not the time to give up. This is not the time to become frustrated. This is not the time to throw in the towel. Stay the course. I publicly made an announcement in October that I had a goal. I was telling you all to set goals. I had a goal. And that goal was to break through that intimidation, that fear, uh, that anxiety or whatever it is when it comes to investing. Well, I broke through that. I broke through that thanks to Kim Edmondson. And, and I'm going to um, give her this platform to say this. If any of you are looking for someone to come alongside you as a coach, as a consultant in that field, I'm, I'm encouraging all of you, all of you to reach out to Kim Edmondson. Um, I don't know what information she wants me to give yet, so I will share that information on tomorrow. But reach out to Kim Edmondson. She makes it um, so easy. She makes it um, where I was able to understand. And, and, and she also can sense the frustration because at one point last week, I said, I'm done, I'm out. And she was like, well, hold on, hold on. Y'all know, if y'all know Kim Edmondson and even through text message, I could tell she was like, Br just breathe because it was so much coming at me. I was like, well, what is this? And what is this? And what is, what's a FNIX? And what's a, what's a index this? And what's a this? And what's a that? And they're telling me cryptocurrency. What exactly is that? I was just losing it. And she was like, okay, stop. I said, and so she said, well, look for this. I said, girl, I'm already clicked out. I didn't shut that down. And her response was, okay, we'll, we'll do this again tomorrow. And I said, mm -mm, I ain't doing that tomorrow. It took me a couple of days. I said, okay, breathe. I looked at everything she sent me. I went back into the system and I was able to, to land on something. So then on yesterday, I think it was yesterday, it might've been Saturday. I sent her a text message and said, girl, I went in there to make sure that my um, direct um, draw was was set co correctly. Now that I had calmed down, was set correctly, and saw the total in that account. I said, "Girl, my money's not ready to increase." I was like, "What?" And I just thought, and I know it fluctuates, but I just thought about the fact that, man, 
Sometimes we allow our frustration, we allow um, lack of knowledge, we allow whatever type of distractions to stop us from moving forward. And I'm just here to plead with all of you to stay the course, to stay the course, because there is a payoff at the end. If nothing more, the payoff is you accomplished something, you completed something, and you can now breathe. Kim Edmondson says, I'm so proud of you. Listen, I had to push through. Good morning, Marilyn. I had to push through to make sure I was doing what I needed to do. So y'all, the inspirational message today is stay the course. As y'all can see, we've been hitting that 45-minute mark. I'm telling you, we're not going to an hour ever. But we're hit, we are hitting, we're actually at four um, at 47 minutes and 11 seconds. I'm going to wrap up this morning. We have so much that we should be thankful for and grateful for. And in that, y'all, if we just stay the course, you know, sometimes we quit right before walking in through that threshold. And then we look back and we start all the way over again or almost to the beginning again. And we have to press our way through. And I want to tell y'all, there's always going to be roadblocks. There, there are. Even when you're at the at the tip of this breakthrough, there's going to be roadblocks. Evil's going to come and try to distract you. Uh, distractions are going to come. People are going to get on your last nerves. Uh, deals aren't going to always go through. I remember um, uh, Steve Harvey um, was talking and he shared that... Um, over 200 of his pitches and proposals were denied. Over 200. He said, most people can't get beyond one denial or one no. He said he had he received over 200 no's before his first yes. That's a lot. That's a lot. So even when I heard him say that, I wonder, well, who was your circle of influence? Who was cheering you on? Y'all, we need to form those circles now. Y'all, tomorrow is November the 1st. We still have two months this year. Look at your list that you started in January and identify one thing you want to accomplish by the end of the year. Not 10, not five, not three, not even two, one. And put all your focus there, stay the course to accomplish that one thing, or at least start it, at least start it, at least start it. All right, y'all, that's all I have today. I know I gave y'all a lot. You all, um, if you're on Twitter, um, I would say use caution being on Twitter right now. There's a lot going on, a lot of bots, a lot of hate speech. There's a lot of divis uh, divisive divisiveness. They're just, they're just being very divisive there. So you want to be very careful on there. Protect your mental, protect your heart. If you can't handle it, come off. Um, or just pause it. I understand you can pause your accounts. I don't know how to do that, but there's a lot going on there. So y'all, until tomorrow, it is our last opportunity to do this on the ballot for the midterm election. So we're going to come to you with this on the ballot. On Wednesday, we have one of y'all's most favorite guests that are coming on on Wednesday. And that is uh, Pastor Derek Holmes is going to be on here talking about voting on the U.S. level. Um, I know he's going to give us a word to go along with that. I'm going to really turn the show over to him. That will also be our inspirational message on Wednesday. And then on Thursday, we will have our high school intern, Lexi, with us. And we're moving um, Kenny from uh, Wednesdays to Thursdays to go into the highlights for the sports that will be coming up in the weekend. So a lot of things that are happening. Um, we did receive some, pictures, some pitches for the show. We're going to be going through those this week. We'll let you know if your show is going to be one of the shows that would join the News in Motion family. Deborah Johnson's show will launch in January, which is called Right from the Heart. Lexi and Isaiah's show will launch in January as well. I don't know their title. They probably don't know it yet either. Um, um, and it's going to be directed towards um, young people. And it'll probably be a Friday, I believe, Friday afternoon around three or four. So all of that is happening. All right, y'all, I'm Gail Dudley. Thank you for hanging out with me today. If you are just joining us, you can always watch the replay. They never go anywhere. You can watch that on LinkedIn, uh, YouTube, or Facebook, or you can watch it, listen to any podcast platform and anywhere that the audio is available. All right, y'all, y'all stay well. And remember, make 
some bold moves. I'm out. 